Welcome to the Dream Life is Real Life podcast. I'm your host, Hannah Hermanson. I know it might seem cheesy or cliche, but if you've got a sleeping giant inside of you, or you just feel like you're made for more, then there's no coincidence you landed here on the Dream Life is Real Life podcast. Listen, as a girl from small town Wisconsin who decided to go all in to her dream life vision, I know how crazy it can feel to chase after wild ideas. Since leaving my nine to five job in academics back in 2015 to becoming a yoga teacher, a life coach, and now a digital nomad currently living in Merida, Mexico with my husband and Labradoodle, I know that all the cheesy cliches are true. I've watched a lot of my dream life become my real life right in front of my eyes. Oh, and I've learned a whole lot about sales, business, and marketing along the way. And I want to share all of that with you. So here you can consider me your friend and mentor as a certified business coach, success trainer, international speaker, author, and copywriter. I've helped hundreds of coaches, and entrepreneurs build, scale, and enjoy their online businesses. So here on the show, you'll find the real people, concrete tactics, and weekly motivation and inspiration to make your dream life your real life. I'm going to let you into the nooks and crannies of these dream lives and dream businesses and offer lots of real talk along the way. Because to be a true leader in whatever you're endeavoring in your life and to create a legacy that you're proud of, you need a tribe lifting you up with you on the journey. And I've made it my mission to be that partner with you. Because after all, we are all in this together. By the way, if you'd like some help improving your business and life, then we just might be able to help. Head on over to dreamlifeisraelite.com to learn more about what we do and how I might be able to personally support you and just continue this conversation in making your dream life your real life. All right, let's get to it. All right, everyone. Today we are with a guest. We have Terry E. Gioma, who began her professional career working in education and nonprofits. When she started trading stocks 11 years ago, she initially saw it as an opportunity to simply supplement her income. However, she was so successful with the side hustle that in 2017, she decided to quit her job, travel the world, and begin trading full time. While traveling, Terry was Terry was constantly asked to show others how she was successfully trading in the stock market. She set up and taught her first class in Thailand, her second in Vietnam, and had a full-fledged curriculum created by the time she returned to the States. Terry now offers an online curriculum that shares her investing strategies with people all over the world. She also partners with organizations and companies to train and empower individuals to achieve financial freedom and build wealth through investing. This is a Becoming a hot topic, maybe just because I'm almost 30 and starting to think about these things, but I can't not hear about investing these days. So I'm so glad we get to talk about it here today. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Anna. I'm excited. Yeah. And the thing I love about what you're up to is that you made it happen around the world. So is this, you know, you were working in nonprofits, like was an international flavor, always, you know, like a passion of yours. How did you take this idea international? Did that just happen? Was that yeah. part of the plan? Tell me about that element. Yes. So, you know, what's crazy. I've always loved to travel since college. My first like big trip was um, I went to Abu Dhabi as part of like a business plan competition. I, I went to MIT and we would host business plan competitions all over the world. And I honestly had no idea where I was going until like I got on the plane. <laughs> like everybody else had done their research, but I'm the type of person that like I get so busy. I don't like actually get to look at the trip until I'm like at the airport and I'm like, oh, this is where I'm going. Oh, this looks great. So like we got on the plane and we went all the way across the world to Abu Dhabi. And then I got to see Dubai and it just it was so amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then after that, I said, you know what? I'm going to like study abroad. So my last semester of college, I studied abroad in Madrid. And coming back, I was like, I'm definitely going to travel again. Like it just has, it was part of me, but it didn't happen until what, 10 years later, I really got a chance to to quit my job and travel around the world. I was actually assistant principal of an elementary school. 
Yeah, no, I saw in in your background, you had been in education too. So yeah, Yeah. I was assistant principal of elementary school and then girls started hating it. I was like, this is not (laughs) it. Like I I got the wrong memo. This is crazy. (laughs) Totally um, yeah, <laughs> which is which actually is like I love the kids, but just the administration. I had four different bosses and none of them all could get on the same page. So no matter what I did to try to, you know, please one, it was always wrong because the other one would come like, oh, no, you didn't put this color thumbtack. And then I do something and it'd be like, no, but you were supposed to go and recruit the kids. And the other principal is like, I will not leave this building. I am not going outside. So I'm like, I have no idea what to do. Yeah. (laughs) The politics of politics in those kinds of environments can be a lot for sure. And I relate to so much of um, what you shared. I also got like my first taste of travel in college and just opened up literally a whole new world, right? Of wow, there's things beyond the confines of my cubicle or my paperwork. And once I had that taste of travel, it was really hard to work inside. Yeah. Like bureaucracy, to be honest. (laughs) Yeah. There's this thing I feel like for me that was like, I'm coming to the same building every day. There's gotta be more to life than this. Mm. And, and I think that that was really what got me like, you know what, I've got to do something different. And as you said, my exit strategy was trading, but I joined a a program kind of like remote year, but it was called We Roam. And we went to different countries or different cities in different countries every month. And so that's when I I went to Thailand and went to South Korea for a month and Vietnam for a month. And the people I was traveling with started asking me to teach them how to trade. So that's really how how it all got started. Such a great business lesson in the fact that your first clients or your first viable offer is probably going to be for people you already know and are on the same boat as you <laughs> or are in the Literally. same neighborhood as you, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's really great advice for folks you know, who are thinking about their next offer or a new offer or like diversifying their income. We're going to talk about how you can do that with investing today, but I also like to just like underscore that nugget that you just shared around it, it just came to be, right? When people keep asking you the same question, as an entrepreneur, we want to be thinking about how can you capitalize on that? How can you record that? How can you duplicate that? How can you share that with more people? Because we all are special, unique snowflakes. Yet, if there are three people asking you about the same thing, there's probably 3,000 people wanting to ask someone that thing, right? That's so, so true. You started small, you started teaching, you know, folks investing and it must've worked. They must've been getting results. Tell us a little bit about, you know, how you started helping others and what results you saw on the boat (laughs) or wherever (laughs) you were. Yeah. Yes. So what's crazy is I had no intention of teaching people how to trade. Like I had just left the school. I didn't want to get back into education. I literally just wanted to be on a beach by myself, trading by myself, living my best life. (laughs) So that's like the craziest part. Like all of the things that have happened since I had no intention. It literally was like you said, I just answered people's requests. And so the first, so I was trading and, um, all the people around me were seeing me trade. And then in Thailand, they had my first class and it was literally just, we found like a little co-working space. I asked them to borrow a classroom. And then like, it was a small group of us, probably like 10, less than 10 of us um, got together, but I put together a little presentation. I was like, okay, intro to the stock market. Did that first one. And they were like, Oh my God, Terry, this is so good. But I took pictures. So this is the key for anybody else thinking about this. Make sure that you document what you're doing. So I took pictures and put it on Instagram and was just thinking, oh, just, hey, wanted to share that I'm doing this little class. And then the people I was with asked me to do it again. So when we got to Thailand the next month, then we did it again. Or excuse me, uh, Vietnam the next month, we did it again. I took pictures again. Mm. So what really got this started was when I got back to Texas, all of my friends who had seen me traveling, known that I was um, affording it by trading, they had seen those pictures that I had done a class. So they requested when I was back in Dallas, well, we know you're going to do a class for us. So I think like in terms of just nuggets, like for other people, if you do one class, it doesn't even have to be for a lot of people. But if you're teaching something, make sure that you take pictures of it and put it online, because then the other people around you are going to see that it's something you offer. 
and then they'll request it again. So yeah. in Dallas, I did another class. 71 people came now. So we're going Ooh. from 10 to 71. Yeah. Then more people start seeing that I'm doing it, but they're in different places, Chicago, Boston, LA. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to put this online and then we'll just see who buys it. And now we've gone from my first online cohort, just a group of kids, a group of students uh, was 30 people. Now we have over 10,000 people that I've taught. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So yeah, that natural kind of snowball effect when you're providing value and getting people results. So I talk about this a lot that the ways to scale a business or keep, you know, scaling really comes down to the three R's results, retention, and referrals. And it sounds like that is working for you to, I don't even know the math on that, but like, you know, 10, 10 K X, um, the number of people you're impacting in just a few years. Right. Yes. And you know what, Hannah, I want to emphasize the referral part because a lot of my business does come from word of mouth. I have one family, 18 of the, uh, of 18 people in the same family are in the course, but it's literally like one person took it. They started seeing that they were making money Then they told their cousin and they told their sister, brother, mom, dad, like, (laughs) so it really is. If you can provide really good service to one person, you don't know how much of an impact it'll have for them telling other people about the course. And like for the first few years, I didn't use Facebook ads or anything. It literally grew organically from word of mouth. So that's, that's really true. Referrals are powerful. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they can last a lifetime, right? You never know when they're going to pop up and come back um, and benefit you and others in your community. So, okay, let's get to it, Terry. Like, what are you teaching? What are the basics? I literally want to go back, you know, not to, not to be traumatic here, but think about me like a third grader. I know nothing yeah. about investing. <laughs> you're not my vice principal. You're going to help me to start to learn and navigate the basics of investing. I've never done it before. What would you, what would you tell me as a brand new third grader coming to your, <laughs> your new classroom? Where do we start? Yes. I would treat it like a lemonade stand or a concession stand. Cause that's the way that I like, in, in high school, I had a con- concession stand business. I sold blow pops. <laughs> so, oh, so I'd go to Costco. I would get a big bag of blow pops. And usually that meant that each one was like 10 cents. That's how much I paid for each blow pop. Then I'd go to school and I would sell them for 50 cents. So if you're a third grader, I'd, I'd have you do the math. And I'd say, okay, how much money would you make if you okay. bought it for 10 cents and sold it for 50 cents? And then you'd tell right. me, I think it's three dollars. No, I'm just kidding. It's forty cents. <laughs> I like I like your math better. I'll take three bucks compared to my forty cents. Let's get right. to that lesson. Yeah. <laughs> but forty cents is the difference, and that's literally the same thing that we're doing with stocks. Um, I use charting, which is just like a like it literally just shows where the stock price is going. But we try to find when is a pro- time that we'll get it at a good price, like ten cents. When can you get Apple on a discount? And you can find that from looking at their stock chart. Okay, we get into it at, let's say now $10. We get into this stock at $10. When it gets to $50, we sell it. Same thing, buying it at 10, selling it at 50, you're making $40 difference. Now, Apple is actually $150 today, but (laughs) just making it simple, right? Mm -hmm. So literally that's what we're doing. Um, But then what I teach is, you can know the basics of that. And I think a lot of people know those basics and they try to jump in and do it without any education. Mm. And that's when they start getting into trouble because there's actually more to it than that. There's also risk management. Well, what do you do if you buy it at $10 and it falls to five? Well, now you just lost money. How do you protect yourself from losing? I talk about that in like module two of my course. Then we talk about, well, how do you make sure that you're able to get it at $10 versus you go to the store and actually today they're selling it for 25. Like, how do you know that you're getting the right price? That's when we talk about charting and how to read charts. And then there's the thing of, well, Terry, I need a checklist. How do I know that I'm doing all the steps? Um, for a lot of my, my students, they're like, look, this is emotional. Like we're dealing with money right now. And it can be really emotional. So I give a seven step trading plan, which is just a seven step strategy on this is the seven things you do every time. 
So that's like the fourth part. Mm -hmm. Then for those that are more advanced, we go into, well, how do you make money when it's going down? And that's actually something a lot of people don't know that you can even do. Like they think the only way to make money is when the market's going up. But there are a lot of people at something called short selling. There's a lot of people that make a ton of money when the market's falling. So we talk about that. And then we go into like another asset class, which is options trading. And that means that you can buy 100 shares of a stock at a time. So those are like the different things that I teach and how you can actually really be successful with this, no matter what the market is doing. Yeah. Well, I think that's so critical, like the strategy and the kind of, you know, having a lesson plan, if we're going to keep running with our academia here today, Um, because I've talked to a few people about investing who are full-time traders or day traders, and they all talk about that emotional element of it. You know, like you said, we're dealing with money. And I think Mm -hmm. in business and also sounds like in investing, when you have a proven plan and you're not just out there every day, every minute, and like this wide open pool of emotion, like anything could happen, anything could come, but you're in more of that structured system, there's a lot more trust. Did you find that naturally or how did you come to discover like we need these seven things? (laughs) Honestly, I've been trading now 11 years. I found it through all of my mistakes. There was like actually like the first month that I quit my job and started traveling and trading full time. I had my biggest loss ever. And I I remember I was actually in Thailand and we were doing, have you been to Thailand when they, when they have the like lantern? Not during that Um, time, but I've Seen it You've seen it. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, we did this beautiful lantern lighting, made wishes as they floated in the air. And then I went and sat down because the market opens at night in Thailand. And I went and sat down. I thought this was going to be a great day. Oh my gosh. I looked, I had lost like $26,000. And for me wow. as an educator, that was almost everything I had. Like I, yeah. I didn't know what I was going to do. I, I remember calling my mom and I'm like bawling because I can't do this. Like I'm going to have to come home. I'm going to have to get the worst thing ever. I'm going to have to get another job. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she yeah. was like, well, you know, if you quit now, how are you going to get your money back? And so there were so many mistakes that I had made. A lot of my trading plan comes out of that. Like, okay, now I've got to really hone down on this risk management plan. How do I make sure that never happens again? Like I was, I was trading too many shares. I was trading them at the wrong time. So a lot of those seven steps come from just my mistakes that I've made over the years yeah. and making sure nobody else does that. Or at least yeah. they have a plan. If they do it, they know that they did it, did it wrong. Like they will, my students will tell me, you know what, Terry? Skip I step. didn't follow the method. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, we, we all understand what, what, <laughs> what that means. It's okay. Yeah. When and who do you recommend start investing? When I think whenever you have some disposable income, I'm, I'm not going to be the one to tell you that you can start with nothing. I think that you do have to have a little bit of savings in order to make money, um, but it doesn't have to be a ton. So if you have about $2,000 in your account, um, my students, I tell them the goal is to make 1% of your cash amount on a regular basis. And some of them even try to do it on a daily basis. So with $2,000, they're trying to make $20 a day. And some people are like, 1%. 1%. They try to like make that some big deal, but it's it's really not. I'm literally saying 1% each of the trading days, which is five days a week. And I, I don't change that amount. So if it's $20 and you're doing $20 a day, that's like $100 a week, $400 a month. It, it ends up being about 20% return a month. And you can actually double your money in five months. But as a trader, 1% a day is actually that's that's doable. That seems good. Other people will tell you we're trying to make, you know, a thousand percent return. And th-. no, mm-hmm. just start small mm-hmm. and try to be consistent with something small. So like that's where I, I say to start. And then who I think someone that does have the ability to have some discipline. So like if you're good at following a checklist and following like the seven steps that I give in the course, then you'll be good. There are some people who are just like Terry. I'm a gambler and I can't follow instructions. It might not be for you because yeah. training can be really emotional. And, and, you know, I, I, I wish I could say like, just anybody do it, but no, I want you to be successful at this. So you do have to know that you're going to have to have some discipline. You will have to follow some steps. You have to also have some patience. 
trading is about being patient, waiting for the best time for stocks to come to you instead of just trying to make it happen at Mm -hmm. any time. That's when I see traders lose. So those are some things I think that are important. Yeah. I'm thinking in my mind of listeners right now, and I think they're kind of self-identifying immediately because I think there are some entrepreneurs who are practicing the law of attraction and they're asking for it and then they're willing to wait and receive and allow. And I feel like those are probably the ones that are more successful in trading. I'm, I'm learning to be more of that type of entrepreneur. I'm more naturally or historically the type that's like, it has to be done yesterday. (laughs) Let's hurry up and it's on to the next thing. Um, and you know, I care a lot about money. And so I've talked to some other friends who like, we talked about, get that emotional, you know, you're putting yourself into this, you know, emotional game. But I think what you are doing that's so beautiful is again, detaching from that expectation that it's all or nothing or today's the day, you know, all in, right. And not that gambling mentality, but following a proven system. And this is just like, all the cliches about life are true and I'm hearing it in investing as well, right? Like patience, letting it come to you, playing the long game. Interesting. There's so many things people learn about themselves in trading. So I actually would encourage if someone was going through like just a self discovery, self help, like type of not self help, but maybe self care, self development phase. Trading actually might be something that you'd want to do. And you can trade in a simulator with fake money. So while you're learning, like you could actually trade in a simulator. So there's no risk to it, but you learn so much about yourself. Like Mm -hmm. what happens when you're losing on a trade? Do you get antsy? Do you start getting snippy at people? Do you, um, you know, have your stomach hurt all day? Like when things are going wrong, how do you respond? You learn about that when you're, when you're trading. Okay. When things are going right, what do you do? Cause, cause as a trader, sometimes you'll see green in your account, you get so excited and you take it out, but you might've taken it out too early. So do you have patience for things to really manifest to their best ability or do you cut things off or self-sabotage, right? Like yeah. those are things that you learn when you're dealing with your money. So I actually would encourage if someone w- wanted to like really develop themselves and just like figure out more about themselves, trading is, it, it will show you everything you need to know about who you are as a person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And especially highlight your money mindset. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Really yeah. interesting. Great. Okay. So All right. So people are like, yes, like I've got two grand to play with. I want to learn about myself. I want to make a hundred bucks a week. Like, absolutely. Um, What are some of the, the tips, you know, you kind of gave us a strategy, but like, let's talk more about those like energetic tips. Like what are some of the things that you wish you had known day one or that day in Thailand? That's like, man, this would have helped my mindset so much. What are some of those kind of just like coaching pieces you might tell someone who's like eager to get started? Yes. One, I would say don't chase. So at the time where everybody is talking about how great a stock is, that is probably not the time to invest. (laughs) So I think right now about about like Tesla, Tesla just hit, um, I'm not sure where it'll be by the time this airs, but like Tesla just hit $1,200. And the hype around it is, oh my God, it's going to go to the the moon, keep going, get in now. And people are going to have FOMO. They're going to have fear of missing out. And they're going to feel like, oh man, I should have been in Tesla. I looked at it back the other day or last year when it was 600 and now it's 1200 and they're going to get in at the highs, which is not the right time to invest. The right time is when everything's going wrong. Everyone's saying bad things. So a few months ago when we weren't sure that Tesla was going to deliver or, you know, another company came out with a competing car, that would have been the time to invest. So I want people to just make sure they're not going with the crowd or the hype. Like we actually invest counter to the hype. So that's one. Another thing is don't be greedy. So I know many um, digital nomads right now, you may be invested in cryptocurrency and we didn't talk much about that, but crypto is doing really well. And you may have even doubled your money, but here's where people go wrong. You have a hundred percent return on your investment, but you're waiting for just one more dollar or, you know, let me just see, I'm going to hold this for life. You just made a great return. Take some profit. 
It's okay to actually sell some of that. You can use it for something that you need, whether that's a flight, bills, anything, or you can wait for the the random down day where the, where the, excuse me, where the stock price comes down or the crypto price comes down and you can get more at a lower price. But I just don't want you to be greedy and just hold on. Even when you have great returns, sell some, you can let the rest continue to rise, but at least take some profit. Mm-hmm. Don't chase, don't be greedy. Again, these like life lessons. I'm loving it. Yeah. <laughs> So I did, this was like my last question for you and you brought it up naturally here. Why the stock market instead of crypto? Or is that not even what you believe? (laughs) Just tell me, tell me your thoughts on, yeah. I think you can do, I think you can do both. However, there's more data around companies. So that's why I personally like stocks and options because I can actually see the company. Like one, one company I've been studying a lot lately is Visa. I know that everybody has a Visa card. I know that as you travel and as travel opens up more, that Visa will continue to do well. Like I can actually, like I can check that and follow it as a company. With crypto, there's not as much data. We don't really know what moves the <laughs> moves the coins. We just kind of hope and pray that they'll do well. There's more data coming, which is a good thing. And there's more companies that are starting to back it. But that's the difference for me. I want to be in something tried and true. I want to be in healthy companies that I know and can follow, that's where I feel like there's less risk. And I'm very much, a, I want you to have the best prob- prob- probability for success. So the best way to, um, excuse me, I don't know why I'm stuttering, but <laughs> the best way to make money with the lowest risk is important for me. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. You definitely have learned so much. And I love how clearly you're able to communicate this. I feel like every other person I talk to, it's like a different language. And this has been the most helpful um, for me personally. So you, yeah, you are in the right uh, role over there. <laughs> Thank so for you. Folks like me who are like, yep, I definitely want to educate myself more. How can they continue learning from you? You can find us on most platforms at Trade and Travel. So Trade and Travel, and we spell out the and. And I actually even have a free webinar on how I teach my students to make $1,000 in a day at tradeandtravel.com. So that's the best place to go. Go to tradeandtravel.com, check out that webinar, and then you can see if you want to be a part of our Trade and Travel family. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely getting, you know, a thousand percent investment on that initial um, decision to head over to trade and travel. We will make sure we have links to all of that goodness in the show notes. Terry, thank you so much for being here and we will continue this conversation, I'm sure. And for listeners, you and I will be back. Listener, you and me will be back next week with another inspiring guest that will help you make your dream life your real life. And don't forget to hop on over to dreamlifeisreallife.com slash show for specific goodies that we talked about today and access to continue the conversation with these guests as well as myself. I cannot wait to see what you create. Until next time.